Hello, Pet World, and welcome to another edition of Natural Pets TV. I'm Robert Semro, and I am joined by natural pet experts, Greg Tilford and Heidi Nevela. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. This episode is really important for those of us who are utilizing herbs on a daily basis. It's an ongoing process. How do you advise folks? I consider myself a tonic herbalist. In other words, my belief system is that herbs are best used to complement what the net body is naturally designed to do for itself. We don't use them to, to fight the symptoms of disease or to just a singular symptom of something. We use them to support the body as a whole, to, to bring the body back into homeostasis. Um, tonic herbs basically strengthen different systems according to the herb or what the idea is of what you want to confront. But basically all we're doing is, is strengthening deficient systems to, to work more efficiently in, on behalf of the body. We're not bypassing anything, we're not shutting anything down, we're not overloading anything. We're just supporting what the body's naturally designed to do. Which is a lot different than, um, you know, allopathic drug use, for instance. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when they pick up herbal remedies is they, you know, they, they think, okay, this is safer, it's natural, which generally mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. But I can use it as a direct replacement for you know something I'm using over the counter or prescription drug, and it's out of context because most of those drugs, if not all of them, are designed to confront just the symptoms of illness and not support the body in its own effort to heal itself. A good example would be the, the way that we approach uh, um, inflammation many times with herbal medicines. The idea isn't to shut off the inflammatory process. The body's trying to bring fluid to a swollen joint, for instance to wash tissues, to use the lymph system, to wash cells, et cetera, you know, and, and it just encap encapsulating that area with constituents of the immune system and its fight to heal that. We don't want to suppress that. We want to encourage it in a way that will also bring comfort but make the body's process more efficient in the process. That's tonic herb use. And uh, on a daily basis, you know, we can use them in a lot of different contexts, both for nutrition or to support nutrition, and there's there could be a difference there. I mean, there's a lot of herbs in 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 the world that are very very good for you, very nutritious. You know, um, nettle, urtica dioica. It's very rich in iron. It's got all kinds of minerals. It's it's one of the greatest superfoods in nature, and uh, we can use it in that context just as a food. But it also has other attributes. It can be used to support the body uh, in, in hay fever season, for instance, because it has histamine-like constituents that mimic the body's own histamine release. At least we think this is the way it works. And um, thereby slowing the histamine release so we don't have as many hay fever symptoms. That sure. Context. So we're basically just helping to, to, to strengthen and the modulation of different, and modulate the different systems of the body with tonic herbs. Okay. Heidi, how about for you, what, how are you utilizing it in that daily maintenance effort? Similarly, because it, it really ultimately want homeostasis, the balance in all body systems, ideally in all body systems, and, and choosing a single herb to address a single condition is not very successful because not only just the, the phytochemical format is they have hundreds, if not more, you know, primary, secondary applied chemicals, um, and really herbs are designed to work together. So, but there are different classes of herbs and uh, a lot of times they are tonic and nutritional together. Mm -hmm. So they deliver that dual role. Um, but then, you know, my deference is a lot often to adaptogenic, but they're tonic. That's, mm -hmm. it's a similar definition where they tone, balance, and strengthen right. a body system. Um, and one of the ones that we utilize a lot in South American medicine is maca. And it's pretty well known for what it does. It's a nutritional powerhouse. It's also considered uh, a superfood. It's got a vitamin and mineral panel and a lot of other things that it does. Um, but then, you know, it, because it's a nutritive and it's a tonic, it, it, you have to look at it, I guess, together is what right. I would say. And there's, there are specific applications where uh, a tonic or adaptogenic herb like maca does better for body systems in need, but it is really good at balancing. It's, it's better in a, maybe an endocrine facing situation, but I agree with you. We, we, we have to use them as a whole. Right. So if the, you're saying you can't just limit inflammation, first of all, we have to address immunity. We're always trying to address immunity, right? Everything right. is a consequence of underperforming right. immunity. We have to use them with respect to what the body's trying to do. A good example is echinacea. I have some mm -hmm. echinacea here, I think. Maybe I don't. Yes. 
Echinacea herb, that's the tops, of, the flowering tops of echinacea. And, you know, it's a very, very popular herb internationally in, in mm. America. Yeah, I think most people it, it, it was originally it. <laughs> it was originally discovered as a snake bite remedy because it's a, it, it, pr it promotes and accelerates lymphatic act action at snake bites, keeping the poison <laughs> under control in that area. And we, it was a North American herb. It's one, one of the few really famous North American herbs that originated from here. But my point is, is that it, a lot of people know about it. Millions of people use it every day, and they use it thinking that it's going to build up a depressed mm. immune system. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've got sick, or I've got a cold. I'm getting colds all the time. I'm going to take some echinacea, right. and it's going to help stimulate my immune system. Well, the truth about echinacea, one of the reasons why the studies are all over the map, it works, it doesn't work, is the context in which it's used. If you're supersizing every day and eating, you know, three or four burgers and chain smoking cigarettes and drinking <laughs> half a bottle you're of scotch. You're looking at me, Greg. Right, I'm looking at, looking at him. <laughs> but, you know, and you're expecting echinacea to boost killer, you know, right. immune yeah. cells and fix macrophages and boost an immune system <laughs> that's already compromised. It's not going to work. It works to stimulate and improve function of a healthy immune system. There's the structure function claim. Supports healthy mm -hmm. immunity. It doesn't replace depleted immunity. And that is where people need to put into mind where herbs work best. And that's where herbs pick up where drugs leave off. Mm. And they also have other, like you mentioned, the entourage mm -hmm. effects of all these different constituents. I often call it also the, the symbiotic relationship between what a lot of science looks at as inert mm. components and active components. And the only reason they do that is because the active components have been studied probably for drug research and the others have been left behind. The uh, truth is, is they all work together. Right. And so one of the advantages you get when you start using herbs from this perspective, uh, you can take dandelion leaf as one example. It's highly nutritious, it's available everywhere, mm -hmm. and it's, it's high in potassium and iron and it's also diuretic. And so a lot of herbalists use it as a replacement for diuretic drugs with the caveat that it also replaces the potassium that's normally lost right. through diuresis. So it's, it's, a, it's a natural package that works in a lot of different ways to complement the body. And you know, these are, this is the chosen medicine of the earth. Everything <laughs> on earth uses herbal <laughs> medicine. Right. And we probably learned about it from animals in the first place. In fact, I'm sure we did. Mm -hmm through the study of animals in nature and under observation of how they utilize plants. And I've, I've had the opportunity to, to see that during 10 years of living on top of a mountain in Montana. People often ask where I learned most about herbs, and literally from watching the grass mm. grow in Montana. Cool. But watching animals use these plants. Selectively. And you, know, you realize <laughs> everything else on earth is using these things. Mm -hmm. right. And they're here for us and they're packaged for use by animals and everyone who lives here. You know, and we should embrace that as part of the natural healing system rather than pushing it off as just an alternative. It's not just an alternative. It's right. something that is here as food and it goes beyond food. Another good example is yucca root. You'll see yucca root um, added to a lot of feeds, a lot of foods, pet foods and such, because it stimulates uh, intestinal mucosa in a way that allows for better transport of nutrients across blood barriers. That's why you see it in pet foods often. It improves digestion. Hmm. So I consider it a nutritive herb and a tonic herb. It doesn't necessarily provide nutritional values, but it supports the digestion of good food. Hmm. Okay. I know you've got a couple others as well. Let's, let's hit on those for a second. Okay. This one is a South American, uh, it's nut based, it's called Santa Inchi. And it's, uh, again, a superfood. It's got a high ORAC value. It's an omega, plant-based omega-3. And there is a lot of research in South America about how it upregulates up 3, 6, and 9. Not everyone believes that. but um, So you can get your omegas in a plant-based, which for some people is, um, is a better route considering sure. some of the cont contaminations that are in some of our fish products. Uh, and besides, like you're saying, it's considered um, a tonic or an adaptogenic herb, but it's highly nutritious first. That's what it's really known for. Um, why some of these, what I like about herbs in general, whether, because they're, the North American varieties you're showing are reflected in South American where different names, but principally do a lot of similar things. But what, you know, what, what maybe is not necessarily always understood is that usually it has some kind of effect on immunity. 
some some kind of either uh, upregulating or downregulating as needed because a lot of times they can it's intuitive right plant based right. intelligence uh, they it might have a, a digestive component a blood cleansing component um, they might uh, most of them build resistance to disease fight infection um, they might be like this one is sangre de grado it it can be viewed it, and it's widely used in South American traditional medicine it is a vulnerary so it's a wound healer it's a hemostatic. Um, it's a blood cleanser. It, it, it does a lot more than that. Internally, you can use it topically to stimulate collagen production and wound healing four times faster than if you didn't use it. So just what, what I'm getting at is that they do all these other things. So, so when you're looking at a single product going, oh, great, maca, I can put that in my smoothie, there's more to it, like you're right. saying. Right. Right. And, and so, yes, we can identify the nutritional value and then medicinal sometimes we can you know we <laughs> identify that as well we talk we talk yeah. about all this stuff you know and by the way you keep using the term adaptogen and, mm -hmm. you know my my definition maybe i think is the same is it's something that improves the body's responsiveness usually at an immune level to or stress stress yeah, or either exactly. a physical or non-physical exactly. influence but right. i think you know one of the things that tickles me these days is that our greatest gift of intellect is what works against us the most in many cases and you know, I, I, I'm fascinated by the study of zoo pharmacognosy, hmm. where it's been shown that animals in nature not only have the ability to specifically select the herbs mm -hmm. they need mm -hmm. to support their bodies tonically or remedially, we'll talk remedially in another episode, but they can not only select the correct herb, but they know exactly when to take it, how much to take, and when to stop taking it. Mm -hmm. And there's been extensive studies starting with apes and moving on into a lot of different animals now and we don't have that luxury. We no, have to we right. have to go through all the scientific validation, and we have to argue about whether it works or not. And we have to, you know, look at marker compounds and what exists inside the plant rather than just go. I need an herb. I'm going to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not an intuitive process. We do also we have other ways to measure what our body needs. We have different therapies. Like I don't know if, if you embrace applied kinesiology, but that's one mm -hmm. way that you can maybe measure um, an herbal base need in the body. But you're absolutely right. Um, I had a situation where one of my cats attacked artichoke, mm -hmm. was trying to consume it, you know, frenetically, and we've, we've discovered she did have a low-grade liver issue, but right. I would have never been able to diagnose it, and, and it prompted me to go to my holistic vet, but that's the point, that they're in, in, it's intrinsic in their body. We right. need a much bigger... <laughs> well, and I think what this shows to all of you is there is a lot to be constantly aware of, keep the research going, Going back to one of our previous episodes, that pet care diary, make sure you're keeping track of these things because when you have the pleasure of speaking to an herbalist or to that integrative vet or the holistic vet, that kind of information is incredibly valuable in determining what you're gonna be doing on a daily and maintenance basis. Thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. Financial and other considerations have been provided by Animal Essentials, Natura Pets Organics, the National Animal Supplement Council, and the Well Dog Place. Hey, pet parents, thanks for joining us. I gotta say, we are covering a lot of great topics, but I wanna hear from all of you. What things do you want our experts to be talking about, educating and sharing with you? Put that in the comments section down below. In the meantime, if you want more information about my good friend, Greg Tilford, you can get that at theanimalherbalist.com or at animalessentials.com, or from my other good friend, Heidi Nevela, visit naturapetswithaz.com. And as always, you can find us at petworldinsider.com.